Okay, so um, thinking then of our source component, there, our, our CD player, there are no real specifications and, and mumbo jumbo facts and figures that you ought to be wary of, really. And as I say, or as I've, I'll say over and over again, it comes down to your own ears, which ones you prefer. There are differences. Um, when I upgraded my very first CD player, which was uh, realistic, I first upgraded that, I, um, I went to um, a hi-fi shop in Essex, where I lived in England at the time, and um, they were very, very patient with me. Um, I mean, by that time, I'd, got, I'd managed to get myself, you know, a decent amplifier and some speakers, um, some Ruark Epilogue speakers, and the dealer actually set up the gear that I had with the old CD player that I wanted to trade in so that we could actually compare what the old sound was like with what the new sound was going to be. And um, I looked at CD players at the time, which was, we're, we're now going back to the late 90s, at the time um, I was going to spend about 300 quid on a CD player. So I suppose really when we're thinking of my hypothetical system, this is what we're, um, it, it, it's roughly the same level. Although 300 quid in those days bought a bit more than 300 quid these days, but you can still get a good bargain for that amount of money. Um, and I found that, um, I mean, I'm gonna flag up a few makes here. I'm not criticizing any of them. It was just, you know, really for my ears. Um, we tried um, an Arcam, um, CD player. I don't remember the model number of it. Um, Arcam have, you know, changed their models since then. Anyway, um, they're a British make from Cambridge, is where the Cam comes from. ARs like Acoustic Research or something. Cambridge Cam. So Arcam. Um, I tried one from Rotel. I seem to remember, and a Rega Planet, which was Rega's first CD player. It took until 1998 to make one. Um, and um, I, I took a, a few of my CDs that I, that I played at the time, um, recordings that I knew were bad um, and recordings that I knew were actually quite good. Um, and I chose the CD player that to my ears made the best deal, you know, um, you know and made the best job of playing all all types of music really which for me was the Riga Planet it just had the the right amount of um, foot tap ability to it it wasn't too bright um, I found the Rotel a bit bright for my ears I found the Arcam on the other hand a bit smooth for my ears didn't um, paint such a good stereo picture um, either um, when it comes to amplification I need to dispel a few myths um, the first myth really is to do with not to amplifiers directly but to do with speakers a lot of people you might hear them say well, you know i'm i've got my car stereo i've got 200 watt speakers whatever speakers do not have watts per channel amplifiers do okay and that by and large is really their most important um specification that you need to worry about okay um now depending on what type of amplifier you're going for now you know in our thousand pound bracket we are going to go for a transistor amplifier um hi-fi world magazine there are people in there that you know absolutely loathe transistor amplifiers and others that are a bit more sympathetic to them um but transistor amplifiers are relatively cheap um in terms of um you know the other type of amplifier the tube amplifier or the valve amplifier which was in the 50s and 60s that was all you could get um but um they haven't died out and a lot of people will um tell you that they sound a lot better than transistor amplifiers i haven't heard one i would love to um i know what um valve mastering did for one of my favorite paul simon albums um and i'll talk about that in another video and yes it's you know, a modern day miracle really. But um, for, for the, our intents and purposes, we can only afford transistors, okay? So we're talking transistor amplifiers. A lot of what they produce is 
dispelled in heat. Now I don't know one end of a capacitor from another so I can't really talk electronic wise but I do know that amplifiers are quoted as having a certain amount of watts per channel to drive speakers with. Speakers have a limit on what they can handle okay so if you if you see a watts per channel um, to do with a pair of speakers then that is their um, they will, they will quote a minimum and a maximum that they can handle, maybe sort of between 30 and 120 watts. And that means don't get an amplifier less than 30 watts, don't get um, uh, an amplifier more than 120 watts per channel, okay? Um, and they're quoted, amplifiers are quote, quote their power in watts per channel, RMS. If you see any other kind of quotation, it's trying to, um, it's trying to sort of, I suppose, lie to you in a way. My old um, ghetto blaster quoted me something like 60 watts peak per channel or something like that. I can't remember the actual abbreviation, the PMPO or something like that. And that actually, if you, when I took it apart and looked at the back of the drive unit, it was something like five watts per channel. Um, that's five watts RMS per channel. So that's how much other kinds of um, quotations can lie to you and hi-fi will always quote hi-fi manufacturers will always quote watts per channel rms and they will tend to be very conservative so that um you know they will quote maybe 50 watts per channel and um the it, it may well be in practice a bit more than that um and it's an average weight it um uh, so that you know it's not quoting the very highest peaks it's just quoting you know the, the, um, an average um, so that said when you buy your speakers um, speakers will again I'm not really an electronic sort of person I know about music I don't know about electronics but um, they will quote a resistance okay um, and 8 ohms, O-H-M-S, 8 ohms is um, really an easy speaker to be able to drive. If you imagine a man pushing a wheelbarrow, um, it's going to be a fairly light wheelbarrow, okay? Um, as the numbers go down, so 4 ohms, for instance, that is, gonna that is in my terms, a heavier wheelbarrow to have to push, all right? So when amplifiers quote their, R their watts RMS, they are quoting it into 8 ohms, okay? So if your speakers are not 8 ohm speakers, if they are less than that, they're going to be harder for your amplifier to drive, okay? So you need to, to think about that. And another um, figure that they quote for speakers rather than amplifiers, is um, sensitivity. Now, 90 decibels is a very sensitive speaker. That means it doesn't need tons and tons of watts per channel from an amplifier in order to drive it well, okay? Uh, smaller speakers, the, the ones that sit on stands, tend to be less sensitive. Um, so eight, um, three decibels here, uh, plus or minus, is halving or doubling of sensitivity. So 84 decibels is actually quite significantly less sensitive than 90 decibels. And I saw a um, set of speakers, bookshelf speakers, quoted at um, 84 decibels recently in a magazine. Um, They're going to be quite hard for an amplifier to drive. Um, so you need to consider that slightly, but again, try and listen to it, first of all. Um, and possibly if you can in an environment that's roughly the same size that you're that you're going to be um, listening in but in my next video which is going to be about speakers um, in particular I will give some rules of thumb to help you decide what size speakers you need and whether or not you need a hugely powerful amplifier in order to drive them. Uh, my amplifier for what it's worth and my 10 minutes is running out quickly my amplifier is 61 watts per channel into eight ohms. My speakers are six ohm speakers, so um, I'm not quite sure what the sensitivity is. I think it's upper 80s in terms of my, my um, R3 speakers. Um, so relatively easy to drive and sounds very loud.